Good morning, everybody. It's been a minute. It's good to see you all. Uh, I know it's uh, it's been a while since I posted, but my life's been a bit of a whirlwind uh, with the new job I took, but I'm grateful for the job uh, and the opportunities that it's provided me. And it's brought me somewhere that uh, I can share a plant with you that I don't get to see very often. This is a plant that really likes sand, the Texas bull nettle, Nidoscolus texanus. And uh, up Wichita Way, it's not rare, but we definitely have less sand than I'm seeing down here. So just about everywhere I go, I'm uh, south of San Marcos. And today I'm at the Nice Loni Wildlife Refuge, um, or Wildlife Management Area, rather. Uh, we have quite a bit of it. So we're going to go meet a plant that's adapted to avoid predation and, uh, and maybe even one of its relatives if I can find it. take a second here to talk about uh, prescribed burn and fire ecology. Uh, you know, I think I've talked about this before in another episode, but we have all of this. We're, right now we're in, uh, we're south of San Marcos, so we've got this post-oak savanna type habitat. So here we got all these, all these oak trees in the distance, and uh, it's mixed with these prairies. This area that we're in now, you see it's much less dense uh, a prescribed burn actually happened here just just earlier this year, I think in maybe January or February, and we can see uh, just an, an immense amount of of diversity in the types of forbs and uh, and annual grasses that have already started to uh, to develop here. And uh, this is great for pollinators and the animals that eat these plants and the seeds, especially birds. Uh, so what we're seeing now is some of the primary stages of succession uh, after a fire. Okay, so here we're looking at, uh, well, it's, uh, it's probably about three quarters of a meter in diameter, this plant. It is a perennial forb, or uh, just an herbaceous plant, so it'll die back and come again uh, from a taproot, perennial taproot, uh, in the spring. And uh, we have seen it's got a lot of buds in this terminal, these terminal uh, chymes, these inflorescences, but uh, it's a bit early yet. We've only got, we've only got a couple flowers opening up. Uh, you can see how all of these little hairs on the plant are catching the light. Uh, these hairs are what distribute the sting. So they're actually like little needles, little hypodermic needles, and they have a toxin in them that is very uh, bothersome to anything that tries to eat it. And you can see here, it's even on the, uh, on the calyx of this plant. You see that? You see how when I poke that plant, it's uh, it's got this white sap coming out of the uh, coming out of the leaf right right there. That's uh, an indicative feature that we're looking at uh, something in the Euphorbiaceae, the the spurge family. Uh, also, when this plant has fruits, there are a three seeded capsule. Uh, so if you you don't recognize it as a spurge right away, you can see those features even here in the flower. I think this is a female flower here. Uh, we see uh, three lobes on the on the stigma there, and it, it is a three seeded capsule. So we've got three carpellate ovary. Uh, these things that look like petals are, in fact, what are called tepals. They're the, they're the corolla, but there's only one form. There's not sepals and petals. They're just petaloid sepals or tepals. Uh, and these help to attract uh, birds and bees, uh, butterflies, anything that would pollinate these, these bright, bright flowers. And the only place that's really not covered in stinging hairs is the inside of the... Uh, the inside of the corolla, we see on the outside even, we have these these pretty gnarly urticating hairs. I did just bump the plant uh, here. Um, I have been stung a number of times by by Nidoscolus texanus, and it's been it's been variable. I mean, some people say that it lasts for days. I've never had that happen. I have uh, I have definitely been surprised by it. I, I'll say it works better than coffee to get you out of bed in the morning, but. It's a, it's a beautiful plant nonetheless, and definitely one of my favorites, and I'm glad I've been seeing more of it since I'm down here in, uh, in South Texas, but 
Uh, you do only really see it on sand. I've never seen it anywhere except sandy soils, and right now we're on uh, we're on a lot of sand uh, where we're at here at the Nisloni. So it's definitely around, and it's uh, we can see here this beautiful uh, this beautiful leaf pattern. Right, we've got palmate venation here, and we've got very deep, deeply incised lobes on this leaf. Uh, and the petiole, of course, is just super dense in those hairs. The hairs are on the upper surface, the adaxial surface, and also the the lower leaf surface, the abaxial surface. Uh, and so this plant is just thoroughly adapted for avoiding herbaceous uh, predation. And when I'm out in the field and I see this on somebody's pasture, all of the grass can be totally grazed down to nothing, and all that you'll see sticking up are 10 or 12 of these plants, uh, and it's it's a pretty cool sight. Um, but yeah, Nidoscolus texanus. Would you eat anything called a clammy ground cherry? I don't know if I would. It uh, it smells kind of, uh, you know, kind of pungent, but I don't know if I'd call it clammy. This is Physalis heterophylla. It's uh, in the same genus as your tomatillo. I wonder if we can find a fruit. Oh yeah, here we go. So here we've got some uh, some fruits on that clammy ground cherry. Look at that. If you open them up, you got a little berry inside. Oh yeah, there we go. See that, that fruit developing there, just like a tomatillo. Physalis heterophylla. So there are a lot of plants that have evolved ways to avoid predation, but you know, this these stinging hairs are pretty unique. So we see them in the spurge family, this this Euphorbiac, the bull nettle and uh, you know, the tragia family, but we also see them in like the the family that has the blazing stars and the the Menzelias loisaceae. Uh, we see them in these urticating hairs sometimes in the Hydrophilaceae. Uh, well? Oh yeah, and then the urticaceae, right? So there's a whole family that's named after their stinging hairs, the true nettles uh, in the urticaceae plant family. But it's pretty unique adaptation and I would say highly effective because I would not want to put this in my mouth if it's going to sting me. Well, okay, everybody, that's all I've got uh, for today's episode of Responsibility. I'll try to be a little bit more consistent uh, with my uploads, but uh, I guess it'll probably be sporadic for a while. But uh, I'll be bringing you guys some more plants and some more ecology soon, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Let me know what you want to see, uh, what you want to see more of, and uh, let me know what you think about bull nettle. Have you ever been stung by a bull nettle? Let me know in the comments below. I heard, I heard some of you saying in the back of my head, well, what, what good does it do? Why, why should I keep this plant? If it stings me and my cows can't eat it, why should I, uh, why should I even, you know, keep this plant around at all? And, uh, I mean, even aside from, like, our own anthropogenic concerns of, uh, or anthropocentric concerns of, well, it's going to sting me, uh, you know, the seeds on this plant are, uh, great for wildlife. Doves, especially morning doves, love to eat the seeds. Uh, wild turkeys will eat the seeds. Uh, it's a great source of pollen and, uh, and nectar for, for our pollinators. Uh, not to mention it just, it, it evolved here, you know, it was here, it was here long before you and me. And uh, in my book, that, that gives it, um, you know, a special place. If anything, we ought to be uh, looking up to it like a, like an ancestor, right? It's a, it's a great plant that, that belongs here just as much as we do, if not more than we do, uh, and, and we ought to respect it for that, for that sake, even if it is a little bit uh, unwelcoming. If anything, I think it gives it more character and uh, even more points in my book.